Okay, so in this video and in a few other videos, we're going to start getting into three-dimensional force vectors and, and dealing with problems in a three-dimensional space. And this is where things can start becoming a tiny bit confusing, but again, I'll do my best to try to make this section uh, very understandable. So in order to understand 3D force vectors, we should probably look at all the stuff that we've been doing in the two-dimensional space. So, so far, we've been dealing with coplanar forces, and these are forces that are on the same plane, and this plane is two-dimensional. So if you had this x and y axis here, like you should be pretty familiar with, and We've drawn a vector here from that origin out to some point, and I called this vector f. We usually denoted this angle right here as theta. And theta was the angle that this force vector f would make with this horizontal x-axis. And so we could write this force vector f in terms of its components. And its components were this f of x vector, which is along the x-axis, plus the f of y vector, which is along the y-axis. And for both of these components, we could rewrite them as f of x, the scalar quantity of the f of x vector, times the unit vector i. And then the same thing for f of y, that was the scalar quantity of the f of y vector times the unit vector j. And how did we figure out what these uh, scalar quantities were? Well, off to the side here, we did something like this. We said that the scalar quantity f of x was equal to the magnitude of the force vector times that cosine of theta. And this is the theta that we're referring to. And we did the same thing for f of y. We said f of y was equal to the magnitude of the force vector times, in this case, the sine of theta. So in one case, we were using cosine, and the other, we were using sine. And if we were to combine all of this together, we could say that this force vector f, which I'll do down here, this force vector f was equal to f cosine theta, and f is, again, just the magnitude of this force vector f, and we would take the cosine of that theta and then uh, multiply that by the unit vector i. So again, this is the scalar quantity of the f of x component, and this is just the unit vector i. And then we would add to that f times sine of theta times the unit vector j. And again, I'm just getting these values, these terms, by combining uh, the stuff that we did up here. So this was sort of our definition of this force vector in this 2D plane. It had a X component and it had a Y component. Now, this is great, but once we start getting into the three-dimensional space, things start to get tricky. And the reason being is that this theta value was always taken from just the x-axis and it just went up to this force vector. And this force vector could be anywhere. It could be here in the first quadrant. It could be in the second quadrant, third quadrant, anywhere. And we would always take the angle from there to wherever that force vector uh, was. And we could figure out the x components and the y components using cosine and sine. But when we start getting into three-dimensional space, it's a little hard to identify which way is sine and which way is cosine. So we have to come up with a way to orient that force vector in three-dimensional space. And the way that we do that is by using direction angles. Now, these are different from direction cosines. They're, they're related for sure, but this is simply just direction angles. So in the three-dimensional space, it's actually more useful to express the angles from each of the positive three axes. So if you had you know, a three-dimensional uh, Cartesian coordinate system right here, you had the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis, right? Now this entire thing is the 3D realm as opposed to the 2D space here. What we wanna do is we wanna come up with direction angles that get measured from the positive axis to the force. 
So if you had some sort of a force in three-dimensional space, you need to know what angle it's making with this x-axis, what angle it's making with this y-axis, and what angle it's making from this z-axis. And those three angles are what's known as direction angles. But in order to understand direction angles in 3D space, let's actually look at these direction angles in a two-dimensional space to truly understand what they are. So I'm going to take this diagram that we drew up here. I'm going to not color it. I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it down here. And instead of using this theta angle, I want to introduce the concept of direction angles. And again, direction angles are just the angles measured from the positive axis to the force. So in this case, in this two-dimensional example, the positive x-axis is here and the force vector is here. So the angle, the direction angle for the uh, theta x, the x-axis, is going to be this angle right here. It's measured from the positive x-axis to the force factor. So that takes care of one of the direction angles. The other one is theta y. Now theta y is, again, it's measured from the positive y-axis to the force factor. So theta y in this case would be this angle right here. And if you can imagine in your head, theta z would be the angle from this positive z axis all the way up to the force vector. And so if we go back to our 2D example, if we were to write this force component f, or this force vector f in terms of its components using this theta x and theta y as opposed to just this generic theta, we would get something similar to this but in this case, well, I guess I can just show you, our f vector would be equal to f times the cosine of theta x times the unit vector i plus f times cosine of theta y times the unit vector j. And so you can see that the force represented by its components here is very similar to the force represented by its components here. But in this example, we were using cosine and sine. But in this term right here, we're actually using cosine and cosine. And there's a very subtle difference here. Here we're using theta, but here we're using theta x. Here we're using theta, but here we're using theta y. And so this theta x, theta y, and if we were in the three-dimensional space, we would have a theta z. These, again, they are angles that this force vector makes from each of the positive axes. And so in the three-dimensional space, I can just add on one, one more component, right? So f would be equal to the magnitude of f times cosine theta x times the unit vector i plus f times the cosine of theta y times the unit vector j, plus f times the cosine of theta z times the unit vector k. And k is just another unit vector that points along the z-axis. And so these angles right here, theta x, theta y, and theta z, they are what's known as these direction angles. And they are very useful when we're dealing with forces in a three-dimensional space. So now I want to go quickly back to this 2D example. And I want to do a quick numerical example to see that when we use cosine of theta x and cosine of theta y, that we'll still get the same exact answer as we did up here, except this time we're just using different angles. So if I had a uh, force vector here in the 2D uh, plane, this was x and this was y, and I said, okay, let's have this force vector f that has a uh, value of 250 newtons. Now, given in the problem, the theta x uh, is 30 degrees and theta y is 60 degrees. Now remember, theta x is this angle right here. That is theta x from the positive x-axis to the force. And theta y is going to be from 
the y-axis, the positive y-axis, to the force. And so the problem becomes relatively simple. We can just take all of these values and plug them uh, into this equation up here, and we would get something like this. We would get f is equal to f times cosine of theta x times i plus f times cosine of theta y times j. And if we can just plug in those values, well, f, the magnitude of f is 250 newtons times cosine of theta x. Well, theta x was 30 degrees times the unit vector i plus 250 newtons times the cosine of theta y. And theta y was 60 degrees, and that is uh, multiplied by unit vector j. And so if we just punch this into our calculator, we get 216.5 newtons in the x direction and 125 newtons in the j direction. And so you can see that even though we're using direction angles here, theta x and theta y, they still respect the orientation that f is making with the x and y plane. In other words, this answer right here has a positive value for the x component and a positive value for the y component. And that makes sense, right? Because this force vector here is acting in quadrant one. And so its x component is going to be positive this way, and its y component is going to be positive that way.